This is a reading of George Van Tassel's The Council of Seven Lights. This is chapter two, Invisible Gears. Densities are the levels or grades through which creation progresses. Thought is the activating force. Thought is the image of the creative intelligence. Progression is a reward for effort expended in creative thought. Through thought, the creator established a pattern through which all things must pass. The people of the earth and this solar system are all in the same boat at present. There are various levels or decks in this space boat. There are visible partitions between these different levels. The first class passengers in this solar boat are not the wealthy people, nor the intellectuals of the system. The steerage is not occupied by the poor or the illiterate. Everything in this boat is mixed up. It's all mixed up. The creator didn't make it this way. The mix up is due to the doings of man. Earth people are dominated by individual and mass ego. Nearly everyone thinks he is better than others. Now progression is upward, and when one looks down on another, he must lower himself to see the other. When one sees the good in others, he automatically raises himself. The creator established densities to control these conditions. The third density, where these things exist in the triangle of confusion, is about all finished. Humans on earth are going to have to conform to the requirements of the fourth density or take this grade over again. The requirement to pass is to live the golden rule, not to profess it or expect others to live it, but to live it individually as you are only responsible for yourself. The drawing represents one of the flowers of the universe. The Vela sector system is only one of the creator's thoughts. There are 12 densities in the system we occupy. Each of these is divided into 12 major cycles. Each major cycle is divided into 12 minor cycles. When a solar system moves out of one density into another, it is called a master cycle. The solar system that we are in is now in the arc between the third and fourth densities. For the planet Earth and this solar system, this is the time of times. The Earth is culminating a minor cycle. A major cycle and a master cycle all at the same time. Let me repeat that. The earth is culminating a minor cycle, a major cycle, and a master cycle all at the same time. This will bring about a rebalancing of the planet on new poles. When this occurs, the great earthquake written of in Revelation will take place. The first density for the earth was when the planet only supported vegetation. The Earth's rotational speed was such that only gigantic vegetation with a germination temperature of around 110 degrees Fahrenheit could survive. When the Earth passed through the arc, our overlap between the first and second densities, it rebalanced on new poles, and the massive vegetation became our coal beds of today. As soon as the Earth had stabilized in the second density, the space people landed animals on the planet. This has been handed down from the ancient records as the story of Noah and the Ark. 
the germination temperature in the second density was 104 degrees. The animals that lived in the second density were also large. They were of the mastodon and dinosaur types. The reason they became extinct when the planet passed from the second into the third density was because the germination temperature in the third density was around 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. Many of the carcasses of these large animals are recovered today from the glaciers of Siberia. That area was tropical in the second density. In the arc of space, when the Earth rebalanced on new poles, the animal with a germination temperature of 104 degrees Fahrenheit could not reproduce in a temperature of 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. After the large animals became extinct, the space people of the Adamic Confederation landed a colony of the race of man on the Earth. It was through the mating of these Adamic man people with the race of Eve, upright walking animals of high second density development, that survived the cataclysm in the arc of space that brought about the humans of the Earth. This was the beginning of human people in the third density on the Earth. The race of Eve became extinct, except for the animal flesh contribution and destructive tendencies of humans. Humans cannot reproduce in the fourth density and will become extinct as an animal man merges in the first 100 years as the fourth density germination temperature will be around 90 degrees Fahrenheit. The humans that survive through the cataclysm of the coming polar flip will gradually die off. The fourth density is not for destructive principles or humans. Those who do not conform to the requirements to emerge will be reincarnated back into the 12th phase of the third density on another planet and have to live through this mess again. The densities alternate polarity and therefore rotation. The drawing shows them as viewed from the top, looking at their maximum circumference. An edgewise view would show them as spirals, one with the apex up and the next with the apex down. Our solar system is about to pass out of the maximum circumference of the third density into the minimum circumference of the fourth density. The Earth will then rotate nearly 370 days in a year. Do not confuse densities with dimensions. Densities are pressures established in changing frequencies of vibration. Dimensions are measurements. Some have mixed up dimension and density. Time is not measurable in the absolute. Time can be phased in density and moved backward or forward. However, it can only be done through the zero point between polarities. As our solar system moves through space, its progression is into an ever increasing frequency of vibration. Each solar system and every planet must evolve through grades, even as babies learn to crawl before they walk. The A and B lines, of course, pass through your body at 90 degrees to each other. The G line of infinite light centers your consciousness and separates you from all other people with a boundary of skin. As these positive and negative lines of energy pass through your body, they activate every atom and cell of your physical makeup. If the approach of these lines to this planet from out of space is interrupted by one of the other planets as they are, then you individually are affected by the influence from the other planets. Our scientists say the moon causes tides, yet they contend that the moon has no effect on crops, people, or other conditions that these beliefs are only superstition. The human body is over two thirds water. Is it superstition to assume that if the influence of the moon moves thousands of millions of tons of water in the oceans, that the hundred pounds or so of water in a person is not also affected? Everything has some effect on everything else in the universe. As you move throughout the day in an upright position, you are moving in and out of many lines of force. 
All of them are charged with influences, not only of other planets, but from other people. Various metallic objects, electronic devices, and atmospheric conditions. You feel these influences and you may wonder how the day or year went so fast. At another time, the hours may drag. These time changes are the results of some influence acting upon you. If you work hard or run, you become heated and tired. This is the result of an increase in the number of charged lines of force you have interrupted through various attitudes caused by turning, bending, and motions of the limb. Heat is generated in the body because of constant changes of the angle of attack from the lines of force. When you sit down to rest for a few minutes, this permits the body to absorb the energy from the A and B lines of force issuing forth from the same unchanging direction. Then the structure of the body cools off because it reaches balance. This idling condition of the body motor is brought about by the fact that each atom is receiving steady motion by the same lines of force. When you sleep at night, the body becomes charged in balanced rhythmic interchange. There has been much said of one sleeping with the head to the north or east or in a particular direction. This is not a fixed law. It varies with each individual. Each person should try the various directions. With some people, it would require that they vary direction occasionally. It is more important to sleep away from metallic objects. Coil springs are especially detrimental to complete rest. Metallic conductors set up vortices that cause a circular motion within the straight lines of force. This is parallelism to body activity. So instead of resting, your body is working even while you sleep. The essence of life is the same in all densities or dimensions. Life is manifested from the A and B lines of life force by the infinite G life. Life is only given form in the first density by the principle of the wheel of life. All vegetation, all substance with forms such as rocks, fluids, and planets maintains form through various times, stages, or cycles. Each form of life in the first density contributes substances to every other form of life on all material or negative levels. All densities of life contribute to the progression of every form of life and densities beneath them. All forms of substances are alive in repetitive patterns for their particular species. Thus, substance through life repeats its cycles from dust to dust. Life is the carrier of progression in its eternal and endless spiral. Thus, the stages are positive or negative or both when they are imbalanced. The spiral of life, also called caduceus, is symbolized by two serpents, the negative, receptive, or male counterpart, and vice versa. These symbols are not zigzag in form, they are spiral. They are centered and separated by the staff of life, around which they twine ever upward through the infinite intelligence. The first density on earth, consisting mainly of vegetation, is of both polarities. The dividing line is the surface of the earth. The positive projective part of the plant is attracted into the dark negative soil to provide minerals and moisture, so the receptive female portion above the surface may bloom in her fullness. This is the reason why a water witcher's twig taken from a living plant can indicate water. It is actually a living instrument. Like magnets, when they are cut, the positive end remains in the same direction. Therefore, they are held upside down in order to function. As all things beneath the, the surface of the soil are of negative polarity, and since survival is the strongest desire, the twig wants to assume its natural polarity position and is attracted positive end but first to the water of life. For the same reason, when you spend long periods of time in the positive sun, you require more water, which is negative, 
to quench your thirst, which is the result of unbalanced life force. Every cell in the vegetation is life in form, maintaining a still greater life in form. As an animal eats the first density, stationary life form vegetation, it gives to its motion. The substance confined to the place where the seed dropped can now move around as it has been assimilated by and raised to the second density, which is life in motion. The same progression of substance takes place when you eat the flesh of an animal. Humans being both animal and spirit are of the third density, life, motion, and consciousness. You, as a part of the eternal pattern of life and form, give to the animal substance the ability to express and recognize the spirit. Although all forms of life progress within their own densities, much confusion has been started by the theorists who try to tie the densities together. Darwin tried to show the evolution of man from the apes. There is no missing link except breeding. As our solar system has progressed through space, it crossed on August 20th, 1953, from the third density to the fourth density. Our planet has emerged from the frequency of the third density. Everything on this planet must now begin to conform to this higher frequency pattern. We are on the verge of witnessing a cyclic planetary house cleaning. All things in this solar system are going to be brought into balance. The space people of the Adamic race, serving as agents of God, of source, have through the centuries followed a pattern of cycles in bringing their qualified teachers to the people of Earth. Approximately every 2,100 years, the spacecraft of the space people have landed one of their divine mothers on Earth to give birth to a true son of God. As far as the records go, they have all been virgin mothers. These cycles are de determined by the Adamic people according to cosmic planetary time. A minor cycle is approximately 2,100 years or one twelfth of a major cycle. A major cycle is about 26,000 years or a complete cycle of the precession of the equinox. These cycles vary in time either way, plus or minus according to mutation. During the last major cycle, the space people landed 12 teachers. The teacher called Jesus was the twelfth and last of the sons of God in the past major cycle. The policy is always to return the last teacher of each major cycle to begin the next cycle. The importance of today is emphasized by the fact that we are not only on the pinnacle of a minor cycle, but are also amidst a major and master cycle at the same time. This brings about a balancing of the planetary forces that the space people call the father's house cleaning among his planets. However, in the Bible, it is called the time of the great earthquake. Noah walked with God because Lai was one of the space people who came to the earth in the ark of Noah. In the Bible, Noah is confused with Noah. Noah was a man. And Noah was the Ark of Noah, spelled N-O-E. It was in the Ark of Noah, N-O-E, that the animals were brought to Earth. The space people landed the various animals that could survive in the second density germination temperature. Of course, there was a flood during the time of the Ark of Noah. The Bible is correct when it said all the water was in the firmament in the first density. That was why the vegetation was so thick in the first density. The moisture would condense and water the vegetation at night and rise as fog in the daytime. When the earth flipped on its poles in the Ark of Noe, the rotational speed changed and the new temperature of the earth being less, the waters condensed and fell from the atmosphere and flooded the land. The Bible says the waters were 15 cubits deep. That's about 27 feet. And in Genesis chapter 7, verse 20, 
even is where that's stated. So the story in the Bible of the ark and its animal cargo is a badly twisted version of a man and a boat. The size of the biblical ark is given as 300 cubits long, 50 cubits wide, and 30 cubits high. That's about 525 feet, 88 feet wide, 53 feet high, roughly. Imagine caging a pair of each kind of living thing in an area that large. And don't forget, they needed sufficient food carried to feed them for 40 days. Then the story gets further off. They confused the accurate ancient records with another ark. This was when the Bible story puts Noah's sons in the same boat. The animals were landed in the ark of Noe, N-O-E, between the first and second densities. 312,000 years later, Ham, Shem, and Japheth were landed on earth between the second and third densities in the ark of Spay, S-P-A-E. Noah's sons were not individuals either. The race of Ham were the black people. The race of Shem were white people. And the race of Jephthah were the yellow people. The various tribes that descended from these three original colors of people that were colonized on earth by the space people is listed in Genesis chapter 10. Each race is pure in its own color. And the universal law reads, each seed after its own kind. And all the creations on the earth, each flower, tree, animal, and all of nature follows this law except humans who were given the right to choose. Humans were given the intelligence to raise themselves, yet humans are the only creatures that violate this law. O oh man, though I am one, I am also many. Though I center the individual light of each of you, you also are the one of me. I live each sensation. I live every expression. I am the motion of thee, O oh man. Consider each thing you do, you do to me. For when you strike one of my parts, I feel the blow. And when you cast a thought of love, I absorb the love of you, and I return it too. When idle mind leads thee to tear the reputation of another down, you have only lowered your thought of me, and in turn have lowered yourself. Realize that I am always with you, always the silent, unseen companion to your every action, the recipient of your every thought. I love to express myself through you in ways that bring me joy, in paths that reach the hearts in gratitude. Help me to express the oneness of each of us that I may center all my parts in unity of me and thee in harmony and love that none shall know the pain and sorrow and heartbreak you did express yourself. I gave thee light of life that you might extend my action, that others might feel the joy of me that are in darkness bent, who are troubled, blinded, and cannot see that I am there. Extend the progress I have brought into being by lifting up another, that I may feel the twofold expression expressed in grateful thanks. Though I am stillness, my parts all move in me. My rest is in contrast, our motion could not be. Extremes establish the boundaries beyond which man cannot go. Though I am boundless, man is bound in being of me by individuality. Man I have created, so I may extend myself through motion of the parts of me. So, I will not be bound within the stillness of my infinity. Namaste. Namaskaram.